Christian Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Today is day 26 of the partial government shutdown and both sides are still unwilling to compromise. I'm Mark Liverman with new details on how an attempt to reach a bipartisan agreement at the White House quickly fell apart. And MSU's president, Dr. Wadad Cruzado, goes to Helena to make a plea for more tuition assistance money. Coming up, how she says it could help those who can benefit the most. Let's get some more scholarships. Absolutely. Love that idea. Thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday morning. It's coming up on 631. And now we are on day 26 of the partial government shutdown. President Trump told supporters during a conference call that he's not willing to back down until that border wall is built. But Democrats seem to be sticking together in opposition. CBS's Mark Liverman has more this morning from New York. White House economists say the partial government shutdown is having a greater economic impact than previously thought. There are people who are having trouble making you know, their rent payments, who aren't able to go out and, and go to a restaurant or something. And, and those are permanent hits to consumption. The Council of Economic Advisors says the shutdown is costing the U.S. economy 0.13 percentage points in growth every week. That's more than double what was first estimated. 800,000 federal employees are either furloughed or working without pay. That includes 42,000 Coast Guard members and their families who missed their first paycheck yesterday. Every day that it lasts is another day where we worry about what we're going to do next. Back in Washington, both sides remain dug in over funding for the border wall. Republicans are really, really sticking together. President Trump's efforts to splinter Democrats fizzled yesterday. He invited rank and file Congress members to the White House for a bipartisan lunch, but only Republicans showed up. Instead, a group of freshman House Democrats crossed Capitol Hill. They demanded the Republican-controlled Senate take up legislation to reopen the government. We've been calling this the Trump shutdown because that's precisely what it is, but it is also the McConnell shutdown. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has said he won't hold any votes that don't have the president's support. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now, Senate and House leaders say they will cancel the Martin Luther King Day recess unless that shutdown is resolved before then. More to follow. Much more to follow, and we will continue to do so. Matt, very cold start to the day. It was just bitter getting out to my car this morning. Uh, it depends on where you are. West yeah. Yellowstone, which is typically one of the coldest spots. 19 yeah. degrees. Yeah, 19 degrees. Not too bad. 7 degrees in Belgrade. Cloud cover, people. It makes a big <laughs> difference. Uh, Temperature-wise, we're doing okay. You can see the clouds trying to roll in there. They're fairly thin at this point, but we have had a little light snow in some of the mountains of southwest Montana. Daytime highs today expected to be into the 30s. We do have some fog trying to roll through Uptown Butte early on today. Looks like the afternoon's going to be pretty nice, but we are setting the stage for the potential of snow. We're going to talk more about your snow potential coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you so much, Matt. Our top local story for you now. The Bozeman School Board has approved spending $2.2 million to upgrades for the school district schools. Now, each year, district goes through all the schools to, to assess what needs are met for each individual school and building. Now, every school is getting some sort of upgrade, and Chief Joseph Middle School is receiving some security upgrades. The district plans to improve the lock and entry systems along with the flow of people in the main office area. It's actually a um, fairly new building, but uh, there have been many changes even over the last 10 or 15 years in that regard. But the board allocated some money for us to, um, to look at a, a better um, secure entrance to that, to that building. Now the money for the improvement project is coming from the building reserve levy that was passed by voters. Also one of the most significant parts of Governor Steve Bullock's proposed budget has its first hearing today in the legislature. The focus, state university system. Governor proposing a $24 million increase in state funding over two years in order to freeze college tuition. It also includes $5 million for financial aid to help students who might otherwise be unable to afford college. Montana ranks 49th in the nation when it comes to providing state-funded financial aid for its colleges. Montana State University President Dr. Wadad Cruzado told the legislative budget panel about a scholarship program MSU would like to expand aimed at kids from working class families. It's named after MSU graduate Maurice Hilleman, who went on to develop vaccines that saved millions of lives. But a scholarship changed all that. A scholarship change his life. 
And that scholarship, I want to believe, was more than just dollars. It was a signal that someone believed in his potential. With that little bit of help, this ordinary son of Montana went on to an extraordinary career that improved all our lives. And then, by the way, from Miles City, a House budget panel will vote later on on the university system's budget. That's very cool. I love that. In other news, we're going to switch gears. One person is dead. Another is in critical condition after an SUV hit a snowmobile on Monday afternoon in West Yellowstone. The two victims were both on a snowmobile traveling southbound on Dunraven Street when they failed to stop at an intersection. They were hit by an oncoming SUV, and the impact knocked both of the snowmobile riders off of that vehicle. One was taken by medical helicopter to the hospital. The other was pronounced dead at the scene. Both were on vacation from out of state. Their IDs have not been yet released. The driver of the SUV was not injured. Well, a lot of backcountry search and rescue calls we hear about involve people from out of town, but a vast majority of the calls are to help local people. MTN's Patrice Parks has more. We're proud to support the outdoor recreation lifestyle this community really values and is part of the quality of life that comes with living here. As with uh, some place that has beaches, they have lifeguards. We have mountains and snow, so we have search and rescue. Captain Jason Jarrett with the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office says two-thirds to one-half of search and rescue calls are to help local people. He says SAR is probably the most economical public safety service we have in the county. And the community already supports that with a mill levy. Uh, almost universally supported mill levy in the 80s to support search and rescue. When you average it all out, it's about 400 bucks a call. And the reason for that is the, the volunteer labor that we have. And it's not like we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. We have the world's best at what they do. And we so much appreciate their willingness to support this community's outdoor lifestyle. Captain Jarrett says the price of these calls is actually minimal when you compare it to the long-term price of people living a sedentary lifestyle. We would much rather have people out being active, being healthy, and saving the long-term community costs that are much higher long on down the road. And of course, there are some safety reminders even for those well-versed in backcountry pursuits. The biggest parts are make sure you have the appropriate clothing. Make sure you have a layer to keep you dry. Because when you get cold and wet here, or wet and cold, it gets sometimes pretty perilous. So you need a way to stay dry and stay warm. You need to stay hydrated. You need to have a little extra food. Most of all, you have to be prepared for things to change because that's what happens here is the, the weather changes, the terrain changes, you change like you just blew out your knee on that, on that rock or that piece of ice that you didn't see. And you have to be prepared to kind of wait and get the word out that you need some help and then be able to wait for it comfortably. In Bozeman, Patrice Parks, MTN News. Patrice tells us Gallatin County Search and Rescue responds to about 100 calls a year. And the annual Summer Music Festival in Butte received a large donation yesterday to make sure music keeps on playing this year. Organizers of the Montana Folk Festival announced Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation, in conjunction with the Montana Resource, will donate a grant of $100,000 if the event can raise the same amount for the summer's festival. Now, the three-day free music festival is scheduled in Uptown Butte for July 12th, through the 14th. That's exciting. That is awesome. A little matching. I love that. Grant, I love I that. I love that. From Montana Resource, thank you for your help. Now here's a question for you. What is it like to get a little tram ride, take a hike to a Chamonix peak, and then rappel in and snowboard down one of the steepest peaks in France? Well, Red Bull's gonna show us how it's done in just a moment. It does not involve me. <laughs> uh, meantime, we're gonna check in with Gail King, see what's coming up at seven o'clock on CBS this morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. We're in Ogden, Utah, the city with the highest concentration of federal workers in the West to show you the impact of the partial shutdown on communities. And do you want to make your next company meeting more successful? Think about that. A researcher reveals simple tips for leaders to be more effective in how to make the most of the time. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.